It has legs over a meter long and changes color according to the menu. It eats with its head upside down. You think you'd find such an exotic looking creature only in pristine habitats, but I have found them in an industrial wilderness. Rudis and I are heading south in search of flamingos. Our journey takes us 1400 kilometers south to the seventh largest mangrove forest on the planet. This might not look like the right place for any bird. But here on the outskirts of Karachi, right next to the factories is where you'll find greater flamingos. the most widespread flamingo species in the world. They eat among other things algae and that thrives in warm waters with high levels of nitrogen and phosphorus like this lagoon near an industrial site. Blood red feathered is the English translation for this bird's family name. The Greek name is Phenocopteridae. There are a total of six species in this family and this family is exclusive to flamingos. The fossil records of flamingos date back to 30 million years or more. These are some of the oldest bird groups in the world. To get closer to these birds, I'll have to cross those mud flats. It looks easy, but creeping up on these flamingos means going from shallow to deep and even deeper mud. Now clearly, I am not adapted for walking in this mud flat. But flamingos on the other hand are perfectly adapted for a life in these mud flats. They have webbed feet and tall legs, which allows them to easily navigate this muddy terrain in search of food and going about their normal business, daily day-to-day -day activities. But I have to get to my hide in order to get close to these birds. There it is, my own private first row seat. And there are the flamingos. I'll take you closer with my bigger lens there. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise. These birds may look pink and frilly, but millions of years of evolution have made them tough as nails. They've adapted to survive in really harsh environments. Their webbed feet are perfect for walking on top of instead of in the mud. Extremely long legs allow them to feed in deep waters. Their thick skin and scales mean they don't need sunscreen when it's really hot. Amazingly, they can even drink water close to the boiling point if that's what's on hand. The greater flamingos live in a saline environment and the animals they feed on are within the wet sands of these mud flats, not visible to us and maybe not even to them. Imagine a surprise menu every time you dine. The best way to get to food hiding in tidal sands is to stir it up.
Scoop It Up. And filter out the goodies within. Flamingos have adopted a unique upside down approach to filter feeding. They use their tongues to pump sand and water within their beak. They do this to filter out crustaceans, insects and other small tidbits no larger than an inch in diameter. As filter feeders, they have more in common with baleen whales and oysters than most other birds. In fact, to make feeding in this upside down position easier, their upper jaw is not even attached to the skull. So their upper mandible in the upside down position is able to move vertically like the lower jaw in mammals and other birds. Actually, these birds are grey and not pink. The pink color comes from the pigment carotenoid that is in their diet. It will take this juvenile several years to accumulate enough pigment to turn pink. So it is actually the food, the crustaceans and algae that gives them the color that we enjoy so much. And it's this beautiful color that flamingos flash around in displays for communication within their group. Groups are called flamboyants and when they move in unison, it is a flamboyant spectacle to watch. To achieve this look, these birds spend a lot of time preening. But it's not just preening, they use makeup. A flamingo colony is a mass of gobbling, preening, and fighting birds. It's a hectic life. And having the right buddy is important to reduce the stress level in flamingo colonies.
the bonds they form with each other extend beyond monogamous couples. These enduring relationships include same-sex friendships and groups of up to six close buddies. A recent study on lesser flamingos shows neck length to be a measure of affection. Flamingo friendships can last a very long time because these birds can live up to 50 years or more. There is still a lot we don't know about the flamingos of southern Pakistan. We don't know how long flamingos have been living in this coastal region or if their populations are increasing or decreasing. We do know that climate change and wasteful water usage upstream are choking the fresh water supply into the delta. It is gradually drying up. This and unchecked pollution are real threats to these beautiful birds as well as their entire ecosystem. Here is what I mean. Although flamingos do excrete excess salt in their diet through a process called osmoregulation, they cannot survive on salt water alone. Sadly, for these birds, the only fresh water that is available here is the industrial wastewater. And although these birds are really well adapted to live in harsh conditions where other species just simply cannot, the long-term consequences of these pollutants on their health is unknown. It's one of the many things that is truly in our power to change for the better. And so it is my hope that Pakistan will always have a bit of pink to show off in our stunning mango forests.